you have knocking sounds coming out of your Saris H3 and you want to fix it, I'll give you the short version and tell you to buy a new belt and buy some belt conditioner. And if you want the long tutorial how you do it and what I went through to figure this out, stay tuned. To get this cover off, you got five top bolts, two bottom ones. The five top ones are an eighth inch Allen. The two bottom ones are pretty big. They're uh, T30 Torx or Star, whatever you want to call it. Depending if you're a mechanic or carpenter, I guess. Just pop the cover off. Uh, leave the two bottom bolts in there. You don't need to fish them out. They'll come off the cover. And here it is. This is the machine. It's pretty simple, really. Um, the mechanical side of it. You got uh, fan pulley, which is a it's an idler. And it just runs on a casted shaft. And then uh, what you have here is the tension idler, which mounts this tension plate. And the tension is applied through this spring. It holds tension. And then the actual resistance is this. This is a serpentine pulley of your resistance, electric resistance motor. And this is what applies the resistance through this pulley right here, this shaft pulley. And that's really everything on the mechanical side of it. And of course, you got the belt itself that just runs through all of it. All right, I... Uh, I bought this in December of 19 and I started getting my knocking noise about eight or 900 miles later. Um, of course it starts up, it, it, it starts fine um, or, uh, until it warms up and then it warms up and then it starts knocking. I'm talking like, I don't know, it maybe started about 45 minutes into a ride. It'd start knocking and then uh, it got progressively worse and then it got worse and worse and worse, and then probably within 20 minutes of starting a ride, it would uh, start knocking. So it got progressively worse, and then it got to where I'd stop riding it because it sounded like it was about to fly apart. Like it's, I heard plastic, I heard all kinds of things. Um, got a hold of Saris. This whole time I was waiting for Saris to get back with me on emails. Um, COVID was in the deep. Um, they responded, I want to say three and a half weeks. I got a response from them and they said, okay, well, they asked if you're mechanically inclined. I said, well, yeah, but I mean, I pay a thousand dollars for this thing. Um, I'm not going to be messing with the resistance unit and all that. They said, I will send you some parts. I said, okay. And they sent me some parts. They sent me a fan pulley and they sent me uh, that screw. Well, it's an Allen head now, but it was a Phillips. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I read things on the internet. Um, of course, the screw, that's a pretty simple deal. This, um, I, I, I loosened this all up. I took the belt off, and this had some play in it. And I'm like, well, maybe that's it. They did send me a new pulley, so this play might be it. So I, I installed the new one. I noticed when I took the old one off that the, the forged aluminum shaft looks like the pulley actually slipped on it. And so when I installed the new one, I put some Loctite, Loctite retaining bearing compound on it and that'll just keep it there, keep it from maybe any premature wear on that forged shaft since it is aluminum. Um, you know, just in case if it did wear a few thousandths off of it or something. But anyways, I put a new one on and it had the same exact it had the same exact play as my old one. Okay, so I'm like, well, it's got the same play. It's probably not gonna be the issue. Uh, as far as this goes, I have no clue. I'd have really no clue about, maybe they had problems with, the, uh, with it coming out, loosening. Um, maybe they had problems with people stripping it out because it was like a Phillips head, I, I believe, the old one. Um, it might be in this pack here. Anyway, um, Put that, put put the screw in, put the new pulley on, um, put everything back together. Sure enough, same problems, same problems. 
and so I contact Saris. Uh, they closed out. They closed out my uh, my whatever you want to call it, my problem, or my claim, or whatever, before I even knew if it fixed it or not. So I email them again. Sure enough, you know, a couple weeks later, no response. So I'm like, this is, the, this is I'm going to have to figure this out myself. And so the woodpecker noise, it sounded like it was coming from back here. And um, when I unloosened all this up and took the belt off and all that, when you hit this, when you push, wiggle this plate, you can kind of, when you wiggle this plate, this plate's connected to this tab here. When you wiggle it, it kind of sounded like the sound of the woodpecker, like knocking against this backing plate here. And so I'm like, it has to be something in here. And so I took the plate off. I took these three bolts off. I took the plate off, and there's uh, there's a few bolts back there. They're round-headed bolts. And uh, I'm like, well, maybe that plate's knocking against that. And so I took the bolts out. I, uh, I drilled taper drilled in the bolt holes and I put some flathead allen. So I know there's plenty of clearance back there. I put flathead allen bolts in there, lock tied them in. Uh, I put this plate back on. Oh, and, there, and you can see there's a different gasket. I put a different gasket back there too, to help maybe calm down the knock. This is the, that's the old, like the old one's kind of like a plastic, plastic, I don't know what you want to call it, hard plastic. Well, this one's just a little bit thicker. I don't know, maybe, Five thousand thicker, and that's just regular motor gasket, engine gasket, and it it it, uh, it made it quieter when you manually kind of shimmy the plate around. But I noticed on these bolts here, they have shoulders. These bolts have shoulders, that, like uh, well, they're shoulder bolts, of course. But the they got a guide on them, so they only go so deep. So it's, it gives you a little clearance, so this plate can. Uh, this it can turn when you tighten this up because you can't have them slam tight. But I noticed out of the three, I believe two of them were really, uh, really long and leave a really big gap and it have excess knocking. So I took them out and I sanded them down on height. I'm talking like a couple thousands probably, and that really lessened the chatter. I know between that and this gasket, it really lessened the chatter down, but I was still getting the same chatter. And so it didn't fix the problem. All right, so what I ended up doing, I was like, well, the only thing I have left to do is get a new belt. That's it. And the old belt, which you've seen the part number on the outside cover earlier, this is the, that's the old belt, yeah. The old belt is is a uh, Michi. I don't even know how you say it, but it's Japan. It's made in Japan, so it's a pretty quality belt, I would think. And really, it, it looks great, except for uh, I guess where they sew it together or something. The threads were kind of showing a little bit, which I don't know. I mean, I still wouldn't think that would be a big deal. Um, but I did notice compared to the a new belt I found, it's it it kind of stretched out. It really stretched out. And so I found some, uh, it's not the same thing. They, oh, Saris went $60 for that belt. That's crazy. And so I was looking for other replacements and I found this and it's made, it's not made in Japan, but it's made in, I'm guessing Europe. And it's, 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 it's a little more pliable and tackier feeling than the stock one. And guess what? It's $7, $7. So I bought like three of them and to make it a little shipping worth it. Of course, shipping wasn't that much either. Um, but I bought three of them. I installed this, okay, and it's it's a little thinner than the it's a little thinner than the stock belt. And so you had to you couldn't you couldn't go by their uh, you couldn't go by their crazy measuring here, which I don't know why they just don't measure the top. Anyway, um, word of advice: before you take anything apart, just measure how much is sticking out here. And uh, you don't have to guess on if you're measuring washers or spring links or whatever they want you to do here. Just measure your top, and that way you know where to go. Uh, reset it to. Anyways, I put I put the new belt on. Oh, and I um, everybody online, you know, some people, ah, you know, use belt conditioner. 
And so I, I put a new belt on, I sprayed some of this on, and guess what? My knocking was zero. Zero knocking. And that's been thousands of miles ago. Thousands. And I think this belt, the this belt's finally um finally starting to get wear on it, I think, starting to stretch a little bit. I just took it apart the other day, retighten, retighten it uh maybe a half a turn and sprayed some more uh uh conditioner on it but uh it was starting to get a little vibration no knocking but just just kind of feeling a little vibration through the pedals on the downhills and whatnot and zwift but um a new belt and some conditioner fixed it so as crazy as that sounds that fixed it between all this stuff i did oh and when you get your if you get a new pulley see how i scuffed that I scuffed it, I scuffed it sideways, scuff it, scuff it this direction. And, uh, what I did, I took an air 90 with some, uh, with some grit air 90 with a grit gritted pad. I don't know, 80 grit or so. And just kind of hit it real lightly. And, uh, and it help, helps keep that, keeps that grip. It helps a uh, belt grip it, grip that pulley good. And, uh, Cause when you have smooth to smooth, uh, all you're relying on is your tension and that's not, that's kind of not enough. And so just help your belt out a little bit. And, uh, that fixed it. Good luck. Oh, Hey, maybe Cyrus will give me like a, uh, one of them thousand dollar, uh, rocker plates for, uh, saving all the trouble for everybody later.